everyone. I'm Michael Brodeur, and I'm back with you again for Pastor's Coach. And I'm sorry I can't be with you in person, but I'm in Brazil right now ministering in a number of churches and conferences. But today I want to talk to you about the issue of team building, and specifically about the issue of building reproducible leaders. And uh, this is a very important topic. If, if we start at the beginning of everything, when God made Adam and Eve, he said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Now, be fruitful means to be successful in everything you do, to be, you know, if you plant a seed, reap a hundred seeds. If you, if you build a house, make it beautiful and, and, and fulfill its purpose. You know, if you have a family, make it rich and productive and so forth. The second point, be fruitful, multiply. Uh, the whole notion of multiply is that God wants actually things to grow. And, and one of those things is your family. And, uh, you know, we know that in the natural, that you get married, you have children. In the spiritual, it's also true that we are called to have children who have children who have children. Um, that God is identified as the God of generations. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is a key principle throughout Scripture. And it's reinforced in the third commandment uh, that was given to Adam and Eve, which is fill the earth and subdue it. Because God didn't fill the earth by creating a billion individual people. He filled the earth by creating generational succession. And this is something we have to understand in the principles of the universe and the principles of God, is that God himself is a God of generations. That his, his purposes take time and they unfold. And the, the whole purpose of genetic transference is that, you know, one, one family wouldn't have a billion children, but they would have, you know, my family has seven, but most have, you know, one, two, three, uh, up to seven, twelve, you know, but there's a limit. And, and then that next generation is matured and grows up into adulthood, and then they produce the next generation. This is the principle of multiplication. The final command in the book of Genesis was to subdue the earth. And that doesn't mean that we're the boss. It means that we're stewards under the loving dominion of Jesus, and we bring his oversight to the earth, and we influence the earth back into reconciliation and relationship with the God who loves and created this earth to be good. And so in this process, we, we need to understand that, that leadership and our leadership team in our churches depends on reproducing leaders. And um, one thing John Wimber said that I thought was really interesting, he says, I never hire somebody to do a job. He said, I only hire people who can get other people to work or to do a job. In other words, you know, we don't hire individuals who are proficient. We hire reproducers. Why? Because ultimately, if we don't have reproduction happening at the levels of leadership in our church, we will be on a dead end. We're on a cul-de-sac. We're going to hit a brick wall in our growth and in our impact. Because ultimately, um, many, many, and perhaps most believers don't know how to reproduce, and most leaders don't know how to effectively reproduce themselves. And so if you look at the Great Commission, if you look at Jesus, all authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples. He's, he's giving us this incredible, timeless truth that we need to make disciples. Okay, and you think, okay, that's awesome. I make a disciple. But actually, if you read the rest of the passage, you're not just making a disciple because you teach them to do everything that Jesus commanded, including making disciples. So our goal is not to make a disciple but to make a disciple maker. And it's the same thing with leadership. Our goal is not to raise up leaders. Our goal is to raise up, raise up leaders of leaders. That if we can actually produce a reproducing model within our church, there's no stopping the generational impact that we're gonna have in our church and beyond into the community or city that we live in. And so <clears throat> this principle sounds good. We all say it, we all believe it, that we're not here to make disciples, we're here to make disciple makers. But Actually, the application is a little bit more difficult. And the first problem you have to deal with is that most of our leadership teams are populated with people who are not reproducing, and they never have reproduced. They're good, Jesus-loving people. They, they care about things. They're proficient in the tasks they do in the most cases, but they're not actually focused on reproduction. And we need to understand that this is not just a problem with them, but it's usually a problem with our entire structure and our entire culture. Um, you know, I believe that leadership reproduction begins with you. If you're the senior pastor, you've got to be a reproducer. And that means that you're, you're both delegating, but you're also developing. This is something we've talked about many times in other classes, is that ultimately every leader knows they're supposed to delegate, but most leaders don't know they're supposed to develop. 
And I believe that delegation and develop, development have to go hand in hand. In other words, I give people responsibilities, I give them increasing responsibilities in our midst, and so doing, I'm training them to take on greater and greater roles of leadership. And so the other side of it, though, is I need to develop them. I need to actually look at where they're at in different areas and criteria of their growth. And we use a little framework called uh, the H's, <laughs> which is basically health, head, heart, hands, and help. You know, are they healthy enough to lead at the area that they're leading at? Uh, do they have enough information to be able to lead at that level? Do they have the character uh, qualities of Christ that, that need to be present to lead at that level of leadership? Are they, are they um, skilled enough? Do they have the actual, you know, the hands? Do they, do they know how to do the various things in the natural and in the supernatural that are necessary for that particular level of leadership? And then finally, do they know how to get help when they need it? So we look at the development in those five areas, then we look at stages of development, and usually those stages are matched to the responsibility that they're able to get. And so actually, you know, we look at responsibility, but the key responsibility of every leadership position in your church should be to find the next generation of leaders. So if somebody's a worship leader, their main job is not leading worship, it's to find uh, an apprentice. If they're an evangelist, their main jo job is not to win the lost, it's to pour their lives into an apprentice or two. If they're pastoral, their main job is not to care for the flock. Their main job is to uh, equ equip the church to care for the flock. See, this is the whole essence of the Ephesians 4 reality. See, Ephesians 4.11 is not the heart of that passage. Ephesians 4.12 is the heart. So we've made such a big deal about apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, but that's not what the passage is about. The passage is about verse 12, equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. What that means is that each one of us takes on a role of equipping the next generation of leaders to become proficient in the areas of leadership that God has developed in us. So we're reproducing. We reproduce new believers. We're a believer. I'm a believer. I reproduce after my kind. I reproduce new believers. If I'm a small group leader, I reproduce after my kind. I reproduce small group leaders. If I'm a worship leader in a small group, I can actually reproduce a small group worship leader. See, all of this is so important, and this is the essence of both the original commission of God in Genesis, and it's the essence of the great commission that Jesus gave us before he ascended into heaven. This is such an important truth, and I want to encourage you as a leader that if you already have a leadership team, and let's say one or two are producers, you know, uh, you know, for seven to ten are not, then you have to, that's your main job right now, is to turn those individuals into reproducers. And I would just say that you need to set a goal, and I would set it out maybe six months, nine months, ten, you know, a year, and you say, you know, within a year, I want each of you to have reproduced at least one new leader. And, and, and without my help, or, you know, obviously with my help, but, but I want you to be the, the primary mentor that produces that new leader who's actually serving in the absence of their leader, because that's our definition of leadership. Okay, and if you can actually get them to convert over the next year, you've won your leadership and you've maintained your leadership team. But you need to tell them at the start that if they are unwilling or unable to reproduce themselves, then you're going to move them into a different position of leadership. Because your primary core, in order to establish your, your example, in order to establish your culture, in order to establish your purposes, your primary core must be populated without exception with reproducers. People who have a proven history of being able to raise up another leader, move on, raise up another leader, move on, raise up another leader, and then continue to provide oversight, care, and ongoing equipping for the individuals that they've raised up. And so, again, I've said before that I believe that delegation without development is exploitation. It's actually a form of spiritual abuse. See, what your people get out of you is they get this developmental dynamic. And so you need to do it with your core. You need to develop each one of them into being a reproducer after their own kind. And then also work with them for the next generation. See, God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus had the three, the twelve, the seventy. Paul, when he speaks to Timothy in, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, he says, My son in the Lord, teach faithful men what I've taught you so that they can teach others also. Three generations of leadership in all these cases. And so God is a God of generations. I want you to be a leader of generations. 
That means that you as the leader of your church are training your elders or your primary le core leadership team to reproduce and then you're helping them to reach the next generation and empowering them and equipping them to actually raise that generation up so that they can also move up into higher levels of responsibility and authority and that the kingdom of God continues to expand through the earth. So God bless you guys. I hope this has uh, been a good talk and, and uh, may the Lord be with you as, you as you talk about how to move ahead in building God's kingdom. God bless you all. Take care.